Hey, thanks for joining me here on DSCapades. This is part two of our very special episode about DS games that were based on network television medical dramas. In part one, I played the Grey's Anatomy DS game, and it was not an enjoyable experience. If the boring dialogue didn't immediately send you into cardiac arrest, then the simple minigame surely did. I mean, who would have ever thought a video game based on a TV show about doctors that bang each other would be bad? Huh, it really makes you think. I bet you're thinking to yourself, that's it. There can't possibly be any more medical TV show drama games for the DS, right? Well, here's the first rule about Nintendo DS library. If it was remotely popular between the years 2004 to 2009, you bet your sweet ass there's a DS game about it. So here we go, we got another DS game that was based on a network television medical drama. More specifically, House MD. Unlike Grey's Anatomy that is just finishing up its 53rd season, House MD originally ran for a modest 8 seasons, from 2004 to 2012. The show was very popular during its run, and was well received by fans and critics alike. I remember watching this show when it came out, and I thought it was pretty good. But I haven't seen an episode in about 10 years, so I went out and bought a season on DVD so I could watch it a bit and give you guys the rundown of the show before I start playing the DS game. The series' main character is Dr. Gregory House, played by British actor-comedian Hugh Laurie. Dr. House is a misanthropic medical genius who leads a team of diagnosticians at a fictional hospital in New Jersey. Dr. House, like most geniuses, is a gigantic prick to pretty much everyone he interacts with. Patients, doctors, nurses, friends, doesn't really matter. He's crass, moody, bitter, antagonistic, and deeply cynical. He can easily be described as a curmudgeon, or even a sociopath. He Although many aspects of Dr. House's personality may seem to be the antithesis of what is expected from a good doctor, he is considered to be a legend in the field of diagnostics, and is well respected for his brilliance by his peers or the medical field. Each one-hour episode revolves around the diagnosis of a single patient who is suffering from a yet unknown illness, and it is up to Dr. House and his team to correctly identify the mysterious malady. Throughout an episode, a patient will be misdiagnosed at least once, leading to them getting sicker. At some point, near the end of the episode, new information is revealed, and in a stroke of genius, Dr. House arrives at the correct diagnosis without a moment to spare. In a lot of ways, House MD is as much a whodunit mystery as it is a medical program, and the show repeatedly draws parallels between Dr. House and fictional detective Sherlock Holmes. Both characters are considered geniuses, have a keen eye for detail, and rely on deductive reasoning and psychology in unconventional ways to investigate and ultimately solve the mystery at hand. Even Dr. House's name is a reference to Sherlock Holmes. Get it? Holmes? House? Holmes? House? Huh? 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 And just like Sherlock Holmes, Dr. House is super addicted to opiates. On an average episode, Dr. House can be seen popping enough Vicodin to take down Elvis. His colleagues try to intervene and get him to admit that he has a problem, but he'll often say, If I'm in a buttload of pain, I need a buttload of pills. A buttload of buttload of buttload of pills. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, Dr. House has a bum leg, and he needs a cane to walk everywhere. And he's in constant pain, which might explain why he's a little cranky all the time. While watching early episodes of House MD, I noticed something really cool. Dr. House is apparently a big fan of handheld video games. I found multiple episodes in which he can be seen playing a Nintendo DS. And it's not just the DS. He also can be seen playing PSP, as well as a Game Boy Advance SP. His penchant for handheld gaming is so prevalent that even other characters make reference to it in the show. The board's meeting again this evening. Why don't you settle down? Play some Game Boy. Or playing your damn Game Boy or whatever else you have so much fun doing by yourself. What's even cooler is that he seems to be a big fan of the Metroid series. Here he is seen playing Metroid Fusion on his Game Boy Advance SP, and in a later episode, he attempts to wake up a patient by turning up the volume on his Nintendo DS while playing Metroid Prime Hunters. Man, I'm super jealous of Dr. House. He goes to work, plays Metroid, and gets super high. He is truly living the American dream. 
You know, Dr. House might be the most famous person ever to play a Nintendo DS. Wait, Beyonce played a Nintendo DS? Oh, uh, never mind then. Alright, now on to the game. So you might be thinking to yourself, Hey, I own every single DS game ever released in North America, and I've never heard of the House MD game for Nintendo DS. Well, funny story. Even though House the TV show was produced for American television, was filmed in a studio in California, and takes place in a fictional hospital in New Jersey, and even though the game was developed by a company from Canfield, Ohio, it was never released in America. Though its North American release was planned for late 2010, it was sadly cancelled. It was, however, released in the UK and Australia. I bought my copy from an Australian eBay seller for about $30, which I thought was a little expensive, but then I saw it was the only copy online at the time, and I didn't want to miss my chance at owning it, so I pulled the trigger and made the purchase. But us North Americans weren't totally left out of the House MD loop. You could purchase House MD as DSiWare by downloading it via the DSi shop. See, it's right here next to Valley Parking 1989. Wait. I don't want to get too distracted, but I just have to dwell on this for a second. There is a downloadable DS game you can purchase called Valley Parking 1989. I mean, cars are cool, I like racing games, but Valley Parking? Can someone please explain to me how parking some rich asshole's Mercedes-Benz could possibly be an entertaining video game? And 1989? Is there something significant about the year 1989 in the world of Valley Parking that I'm not aware of? From the trailer, it looks as if you park cars belonging to 1980s celebrities. There's Burt Reynolds, Tina Turner, and I don't know, is that maybe Eddie Van Halen? Jeez, they couldn't even get any good 80s celebrities. Maybe if I could park Lionel Richie's BMW, or Prince's Purple Rain motorcycle, or hell, maybe I could just park Rick Astley's Nissan Stanza. Now that's a video game. But sadly, games like Valet Parking 1989 may be lost to time because as of March 31st, 2017, Nintendo has discontinued service to the DSi shop. But I digress. We are here to play the House MD game. Let me just get the cartridge out. Oh wow, this game comes with a month's supply of Vicodin. I love it when DS games come with bonus items. Alright, House MD for Nintendo DS. This game was published by Legacy Interactive and developed by Glyphic Entertainment, makers of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Marker Man Adventures, and of course Babysitting Mania. Those gems, coming to a Walmart clearance bin near you in fall of 2007. This game is made up of five episodes, which, like the TV show, follows a single patient's hour-long journey to the correct diagnosis. I'm going to play the first episode, called Globetrotting. So here we are with popular travel show host, Henry Richter. Richter is on site in Malaysia, exploring the Mayan pyramids of Malaysia, looking for Olmec or something, and he starts feeling kind of sick. He's getting the chills, he's about to keel over, he's coughing, it looks like he's having some sort of respiratory problems, trouble breathing, he, he is having some health problems, for sure. Camera guys are like, dude, are you getting this? Emmy time. Sick old man passed out on the ground, Emmy time. Move over, flea bag. So Richter is in the hospital. House tells him he's there to diagnose him, and then he says, By the way, I love doing Million Dollar Baby. Oh, cause he's old like Clint Eastwood's character in the 2004 movie. Ah, strong joke to start the game off with there, Dr. House. We ask him some questions, or really we interrogate him, because every patient in this game is keeping a lie or big secret from Dr. House. Now we have to do a physical examination on him. Use the stethoscope to listen to the old man's nipple. What's that nipple sound like? I can hear the hum of a speedboat in the distance. Alright, let's equip the plus four dexterity nylon gloves. That's right, give that sternum a good gloving. On to more questions. It's a bit like an L.A. Noir interrogation, but it really doesn't matter which question you choose. If your question leads nowhere, you can just pick another one. We move next to the whiteboard. This is where House's team of doctors throw a whole bunch of random diagnoses in the air and see if any of them stick. You catch the diagnosis with the stylus on the bottom screen and then flick it up to the top screen. Then House will very kindly and gently explain why that is an incorrect hypothesis. This music gets so annoying. 
It reminds me of the Family Guy theme song. Lucky there's a family guy. The avian flu? Well, that explains the flu symptoms, but avian flu is contracted from prolonged exposure to birds. Yo, what is this, your first day? Come on, good guesses only. How about this one? I love the stars. It's like, you've contracted magical malaria. Malaria? Don't you know Bill Gates cured that in 2007? All right, now we gotta draw some blood and do some tests. These ones get really repetitive. They actually make you do this blood draw game like 10 times throughout the entire game. I mean, come on, is this House MD or House RN? Yep, disinfect the area. You know, I have quite a phobia of needles and I passed out three times the first time I played this minigame. All right, we gotta fill up the vials. We go on to the centrifuge where we spin a vial. Wait, why am I spinning it? What kind of hospital has a hand-powered centrifuge? You don't have a power, like an electrical one? What is this, an Amish hospital? You have to stay in the green zone for a certain period of time. Then on to the blood analyzer. This minigame is even more repetitive than the blood draw. You have to complete this one three times in the first episode alone. And it doesn't change at all. Every time you do it, it's like the same combinations of buttons and motors you turn. These little motors you spin remind me of the forest spirits in Princess Mononoke. Finish the blood analyzer and it's off to the petri dishes. You have to sort these germs by color. You know, like a doctor would do with their job. God, I feel like I'm sorting my laundry. In this next scene, House is questioning the producer of Richter's show, but House senses something's up. He knows they're keeping something from him, but what's their secret? Meanwhile, Richter's health is in decline. He's developed skin lesions, so House instructs his team to check out Richter's house for clues. No warrant, no police officers, just a couple of doctors looking for clues. These mini games are like I Spy or treasure hunt games you'd find on the DS. We're just looking for any random old thing. We collect a sample from the Billy Bass Mounted Fish. We have to put the pictures together, and it's a Malaysian temple. But it's not in Malaysia. The address on the back is from a soundstage in New Jersey. So they check out the soundstage. There's a beach, a Buddha statue on the Great Wall of China. He's got like a whole studio back here to fake his trips. Back at the hospital, Richter finally admits that he's been faking his trips. He says he used to go abroad in his younger years, but now that he's old, it's too much work to leave the country, so he films him in New Jersey. So it's back to the whiteboard. This time, House can rule out any tropical diseases. He's now looking for a disease you'd probably catch in New Jersey. Yay, more blood tests. Heat up the blood with the Bunsen burner. Do a spinal tap. Yep, jam it right in there. That's the spine. Get that spinal fluid. Yeah, have it drop right into those little salt shakers. Then we have to spot the abnormalities in his lungs. Looks like he's inhaled a bunch of pistachios. So the doctors go back to Richter's house and check out the backyard. Collect a sample of bird crap. Yes, that's correct. The medical term is bird crap. Name another video game in which you have to collect bird crap. Come on. We get the potted plant, we get the flowers. Ooh, fascinating, a rabbit's nest. Over here, yep. Take that old man's lawnmower. We have to use the stylus to remove the clumps of grass from the lawnmower. We remove all these clumps, and then what do we find? Oh, it's a dead rabbit. It's like if Quentin Tarantino made an Elmer Fudd movie. <laughs> Inside Richter's house, we find a note from the gardener, and he left his phone number. They give him a visit and find out he's experiencing the same symptoms, except not as severe. He says he hasn't had any contact with Richter in many weeks, so they suspect it has something to do with the environment. At this point, House and his team have concluded that the bacteria was contracted from a dead rabbit. 
but we still haven't landed on a diagnosis. House is so close. He has all the information he needs. He just needs one final stroke of genius. He just needs to play a game of Arkanoid in his head. Yep, I'm not even kidding. To come up with the correct diagnosis, we need to complete this ball and paddle minigame. Some of them there brainologists and whatnot say the human brain is a complex system of neurotransmitters and protoplasmic synopsis. Well, if you ask me, the contents of the human mind is as simple as a few light bulbs and a tennis ball. Boom! Epiphany found! Of course, Richter has t t tularemia. Now it's all starting to make sense. It was so obvious. You know, tularemia. Also known as rabbit fever? While Richter was mowing his lawn, he chopped up a bunny rabbit and breathed in the bacteria and that's how he got sick. Richter gets treated with the specific antibiotic and he's gonna be just fine. And with that, we have concluded the first episode of the House MD game. All right, so we played the first episode of the House MD game. Like I said earlier, each episode takes about an hour, so I really had to edit some stuff out to get the whole story in here. I didn't even have time to cover the panty sorting minigame of episode three. I do have some mixed feelings on this game, but I certainly was able to find some bright spots. Even though the game lacks fully animated cutscenes, the illustrations are very detailed and the characters' likenesses are spot on. The same cannot be said for the Grey's Anatomy game. I really enjoyed the game's episodic format. It's a cool concept having an hour-long medical mystery and investigation leading up to a thrilling conclusion, just like the show. And I feel like the writers of the game did a good job of researching obscure but believable medical conditions for each patient. But as much as I admired the writing and the plot, I really couldn't get over how much of Dr. House's supposedly witty quips and insults just fell completely flat. I mean, maybe they would have worked better if I heard the words sarcastically coming out of Hugh Laurie's mouth, but just reading them on the DS screen, they really didn't work. Every joke was super lame, and it seemed like the writers were trying way too hard to be funny. In fact, I was much more likely to find myself laughing at how lame or irrelevant the jokes were than laughing at the jokes themselves. And it wasn't just a few jokes here or there, they were everywhere. Every time you asked a correct question in the interrogation scenes, he ends it with some sort of tacked on insult or jab. I mean, just look in the first episode, he repeatedly insults Henry Richter's age again and again. We get it, he's old. You know, House, you're no spring chicken yourself there. I feel like the real Dr. House of the TV show would be a little bit more self-aware. As for the minigames, I really appreciated that these minigames were fairly complex. A lot of them took over a minute to complete, compared to some of the minigames in Grey's Anatomy that you could do in less than 10 seconds. The problem with the House MD minigames is that they are so damn repetitive they force you to complete the same mindless minigames over and over, with absolutely no differences between them in each episode. A lot of the medical minigames make sense, but there's one very bizarre minigame that I feel like I have to address in this video. In the final episode of the game, which is about a pothead rodeo clown with donated organs, the very last minigame you must complete before you beat the game, and this is 100% real, you play as a sandwich that must navigate a maze and avoid being eaten by hungry interns on the way to Dr. House's office. And the game notes that the hospital cafeteria has been closed all day so the interns are extra hungry. I guess I missed that episode of House about the sentient sandwich going through a maze. The interns keep getting me. I probably had to restart this level like 20 times. You gotta be really stealthy. It's like Metal Gear Solid. Or should I say, Metal Gear Sandwich. Also, I don't care how long the cafeteria has been closed. If I see a sandwich walking down the hallways of my hospital, I'm not gonna eat it. And then, yeah, I beat the game. I was not expecting to play this game all the way through, but, you know, I, I had to beat that sandwich boss. For all of its faults, I still think this game is worth playing, especially if you're into the show, or you're just into weird medical shit. People tell me if I review games, I should give it like a numerical rating to make it easier to understand, so I'm gonna give this game a 46 out of 72. Well, that's it for this episode of DSCapades. Thank you so much for watching, and hey, House is playing his Nintendo DS. I wonder which game he's playing. Ah, that makes sense.